What is going on guys, it's Benjamin here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the Rainbow Six Siege Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. Now I know I'm a little bit late on this one, and this doesn't take away from any of the performance increases inside of this guide. It's going to give you the latest and greatest in performance increases for Rainbow Six Siege, whether you're playing it casually, competitively, or just playing it every now and then. This guide will ensure that you guys can increase your FPS on low-end, high-end, and medium-end systems, no matter what sort of budget system you might be running, or however high-end it might be, you'll be guaranteed to see the results that you're after. Now this is definitely one of the more simpler FPS guides, so let's get right into it. Now if you guys are pleased with the results please do leave a like down below as it helps me out tremendously and any feedback in the comment section below or any questions you wish to ask regarding this guide or if you might run into any troubles along the way please do feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Please do share this video around with any friends, family or anyone else that you might be playing Rainbow Six Siege with if they're having FPS troubles or just want a nice increase to maybe fix any stuttering, increase their FPS or fix any dropping issues that they might be having. So moving on and starting off with the tutorial what we need to do is you need to go down into the description below and download the Rainbow Six Siege FPS Pack by Pan. You're going to see some other links in there as well, but don't worry about those just yet because we'll be coming to those later on. Once you've got the FPS Pack, put it onto your desktop. You're going to need either WinRAR or 7-Zip to do this. The links are in the description for that if you don't have that. Now what you need to do once you've got the file, what you need to do is you need to right click on it and hit Extract here. Then you'll notice you have a folder on your desktop called Rainbow Six Siege FPS Pack by Panj. Go inside of there and you'll notice there is going to be a game config file with game settings.ini in it, a CC setup 553.exe and time resolution.exe. Okay, so once you've got this file downloaded, what we need to start by doing is going into Uplay or Steam and booting our game because we'll be changing in-game settings first just to ensure that they are how we want them. Okay now once you're in game what you need to go ahead and do is go into the top right, go to the options screen and then what we are interested in doing is going into our graphics options inside of here. Put the overall quality and set that to custom. We're going to be going with texture quality. Now this depends on what sort of system you are running. I'm running a relatively medium to high end system so I'm going to go with high. If you guys want the best FPS possible make sure you go and set that to low, medium or high. I do not recommend going to very high. Texture filtering, I recommend everyone set to linear, shading quality low, shadow quality low, reflection quality low, ambient occlusion off, lens effects off, zoom in depth of field off, post-process anti-aliasing going to be set to off, and multi-sample anti-aliasing is going to be set to temporal filtering. Once you guys have set that, make sure you press the apply button here, then what we can do is we can just simply exit out of our game. Okay, now with that part out of the way, we can go ahead and we can apply our game config. Go inside of the folder provided, go into the game config file, and what I need you guys to do is right click on this and hit copy. Then go into your documents found here, go into a folder called my games, inside of my games you'll see rainbow six dash Siege. Inside of there, you're going to notice either one or two of these random number profiles, or maybe even more. These are your player profiles. For me, I have two of them. So what I'm going to do is go into both folders and hit paste and replace the file in this destination. I'm going to back out of there and go into the other one. If you only have one, that's absolutely fine. And paste, replace file in this destination. Go into all of those folders which are randomly named with random letters and numbers and make sure that you go in and replace the game settings.ini. Once you're done with that, we can now exit out. Okay, now moving on from that step, we're going to now be disabling full screen optimizations. To do this, first off, I'm going to be showing you guys on you play how to do it. Go into you play, click on Rainbow Six Siege like this, go into the scroll down menu found here in the bottom left and go to the properties tab. Inside of properties, the game installation folder will be listed and hit open folder. Inside of there, what I want you to do is scroll all the way down until you're shown rainbow6.exe. Inside of there, I want you to right click, go to properties, go to compatibility and check the disable full screen optimizations tab. Once you've done that, press apply and OK. If you do not have that tab, do not worry. It just means that your version of Windows does not support it. That is nothing to worry about. I know some people are running the latest update and they do not have that option available to them. It doesn't matter. But if you do have that option available to you, make sure that you set it to be disabled. Now, if you guys are running it on Steam, I don't have the game on Steam, so I can use a random Steam game as an example. Right click on Rainbow Six. Let's just say this is Rainbow Six, for example. Go to properties, go to browse local files under local files and do exactly what I did there in the Uplay folder and just follow those steps. Once you're done with that, we can either close or minimize out of Uplay or Steam and we can continue on. Now what we're going to be doing is going into our Windows Power Options to ensure that we are unparked on our CPU cores. Go into the bottom left, type in Power. Now any of the icons with the battery and the core going around it for the Power Plan options, click on. Doesn't matter which you click on. Go to Power Options found at the top. Now once you're inside of this screen, what I want you guys to do is go to Show Additional Plans and select High Performance. Your High Performance Power Plan is more than likely going to be down here. Once you find it, hit select and go into change plan settings. Instead of here, you can change any of these options to whichever you seem fit for your PC. These do not matter. What we're interested in is going to change advanced power settings. Once inside of change advanced power settings, we want to go into the hard disk option, turn off hard disk after, go into the setting for this and set that to zero. Hit apply. This is absolutely fine, which means that the hard drive will not slow itself down automatically and no, this will not deteriorate the lifespan of your hard drive. Scroll all the way down to processor power management, hit the enlarge on there, go to maximum processor frequency, minimum processor state 
and maximum processor state. And then what we're interested in doing is setting the minimum processor state to 100 and the maximum processor state to 100. And after you're done with that, press apply, press OK, hit save changes, and you can exit out of the power options. Moving on from there, we're going to be going into Windows Advanced Options. Go into the bottom left, type in this PC, right click on the logo of this PC, go to Properties. On the left hand side, go to Advanced System Settings, go to the Advanced tab found here at the top, go into Performance Settings, and inside of here, we're going to be going for Visual Effects Custom, and we're going to be deselecting all of the options inside of here just by unchecking them just like that. Once you're done inside of there, only leave show thumbnails instead of icons on and smooth edges of screen fonts and press apply. Go to the advanced tab found at the top, press the scheduling, make sure that's set to programs, press apply and data execution prevention. I like to turn that on for essential windows and programs and services only. Usually it's on for all, so just select that at the top there if you wish to do so, press apply and OK, and then once more, press OK. It might ask you to do a system restart, but we're going to be doing a system restart at the end of this tutorial. Now what we're going to be doing is going in and disabling all of XS Windows gaming options. So to do this, go into the bottom left, press the system settings cog found here. And once you're done inside of that, it's going to bring you into your Windows settings, go inside of the gaming settings found here, select game bar, I'm going to be switching all of these switches to the off position. Scroll all the way down, make sure there are no more. Go into game DVR, turn this off, because we do not want to use this for background recording, because there are a lot better solutions out there, which give you a lot better performance this is terrible and go into game mode and you can experiment with this option but I usually find that it's best turned off as of September 2017 again you guys can experiment with this just by turning it on and off and doing your own benchmarks but for the majority of people turning game mode off actually helps so I personally have game mode turned off which done inside of there you can then exit out now I'm going to be doing is going into MS config to set our processes go into the bottom left type in MS config and press enter once you're done inside of here, we're going to be going into the boot option, selecting our Windows version and drive here, hitting advanced options, selecting a number of processes. Now inside of this drop down menu, I want you guys to select the highest number you possibly can. This might be more than mine, it might be less than mine, it could all the way be up to around about 24, or it could be as little as 4. So just make sure to set it to the maximum number, make sure you use your scroll wheel just to ensure that you get the highest number possible. And I'm going to select 6 because that is my highest, and press OK and apply. Once you're done inside of there, press OK, it's going to ask you to restart, we're going to be doing exit without restart as we're going to restart at the end of this tutorial. Now what we're going to be doing is disabling excess Windows services which take up a lot of performance. Go into the bottom left, type in services, press enter. And inside of here, we're going to be scrolling all the way down to the S section. This goes by alphabetical order. And we're going to be finding a service called Superfetch. Once you find the service, right click on it, go to properties, set the startup type to disabled. And the service is more than likely going to be running if you haven't turned this off before. Set it to stop just by pressing that button there. Give it a couple of seconds, hit apply and OK. Also come all the way down to the bottom and I recommend doing the exact same for the Xbox Accessory Management Service, the Xbox Live Authentication Manager, Xbox Live Game Save and the Networking Service. And to do this, make sure that you right click on the service, go to Properties, Startup Type Disabled, Service Status Stop, Apply, OK. And just do that for the ones I listed just there. Once you're done with that, we can then exit out of these services. Now that we've disabled those services, we can then clean up those excess dump files and excess Windows dump files, which are no longer used by your system. To do this, go into the bottom left. And what we're going to be doing is typing in percent app data percent. Then we're going to be pressing enter, going into app data found here at the top, going into local, scrolling all the way down until you see the TEMP folder. Inside of here, we're going to be going from the bottom to the top, highlighting absolutely everything inside of here. And then we're going to be right clicking and pressing delete. Press yes. It's going to tell you that it can't be completed for all files and folders inside of here. Select do this for all current items and hit skip. It's more than likely going to save for the folders as well. Do this for all current items, skip. Now it's more than likely going to be removing 99% of the files and folders outside of this folder. It's always fantastic to hear how many gigabytes you've just removed. Some people can remove a couple hundred megabytes. I've heard rumors of people deleting up to about 50 plus gigabytes from this folder, depending on how old their Windows installations are. It's crazy. So, so if you guys can let me know in the comment section below, that would be really cool. Once you're done inside of there, what we're going to be doing is exit out, go into the bottom left, type in run, press enter. And inside of here, we're going to be typing in prefetch. Once you press that, press OK. And inside of here, just like we did with the temp folder, I want you to go in from the bottom to the top. You're more than likely going to see a lot more files and folders in here than I do. I only cleared this out around a couple of days ago. And we're also going to be doing right click and delete. Yes, it might tell you that the items cannot be deleted. If it does, just do what you did with the temp folder and skip those items. Once you're done with that, what we're going to be doing is right clicking on the recycle bin and we're going to be emptying our recycle bin. Next, what we're going to be doing is going into the FPS pack provided and we're going to be booting into the CC setup. This is a setup for C cleaner. It's a fantastic 
fantastic utility program for your PC to ensure that it clears out excess files, removes any temporary files, and keeps your system running in tip-top condition. Run for the installer, and you'll be given a program that just looks like this. Inside of here, we're going to go into the cleaner utility and pressing analyze. Once CCleaner is done analyzing, it's going to tell you how many megabytes or gigabytes can be removed. I only did this again around about 24 hours ago, so it's going to be able to remove 30 megabytes for me. I have personally come in here before and been able to remove about six gigabytes at times. So once it's done running the analysis, hit the run cleaner button, press OK to any prompts it brings up. It might tell you some things need to be closed, that's fine, and press yes. Once it's done with that, it's going to tell you clean and complete. What I like to do after that is I like to press analyze again and keep running the cleaner until you're given the analysis complete prompt here to ensure that everything has been cleared out. After you're done inside of there, go over to the, the registry tool found here on the left hand side and hit scan for issues. You're more than likely going to see pages upon pages of registry issues. That's absolutely fine. Go into the bottom right section, fix selected issues. Would you wish to back up changes to the registry? I do no and fix all selected issues. Press close, scan again just to ensure that everything has been removed. It more than likely will come up with more for you guys and keep doing that and fixing them until it says no issues were found. Now, another thing we want to take note of inside of this program is what our GPU is. I'm running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. If you guys are running an AMD Radeon, it'll be up here as well. And this is very important as we're going to be upgrading our GPU drivers now. So depending on what your GPU was there, I'm personally running an NVIDIA card. I have linked both GPU vendors down below if you need to update your GPU drivers. GPU drivers come out around about once every month. So I ensure that you guys go ahead and download those when they come out. If you guys haven't downloaded a GPU driver yourself personally, in around about the last month or even more, I recommend that you guys definitely go ahead and do so. So go down into the description below, click on the corresponding link, whether it might be an AMD Radeon card or an NVIDIA card, and go to the websites provided here. For NVIDIA users, go onto the website and hit the, the automatic driver updates and download those. For AMD users, scroll down and do the automatically detect and install your driver and hit download now on this prompt. And then once you've got your prompt downloaded, make sure that you go into it and it'll run you through updating your GPU driver. Just follow the on-screen instructions. It's very, very simple. Moving on from there, I've included a link to advanced system care 10 free now this is an absolutely fantastic program so i recommend you guys go ahead and hit the free download button and install that and i'm going to run you guys through how to use the program make sure to boot the program once you have installed it this program is very very simple to use it's going to go ahead and do a full sweep through your system all of your hard drives all of your registry files to make sure that there are no corrupt files to fix any issues that might be inside of the system or when your system boots or anything like that and just ensure that your pc is running to the tip top condition it's going to go ahead and improve some internet boost fixes vulnerability fixes within Windows security and just make sure that you're running the safest and fastest version of Windows you possibly can. So go into the clean and optimize button found here at the top and hit scan. This is going to take a little while depending on whether or not you've done this before. It usually likes to take a long while whilst going through the security holes, but I would definitely stick it out. It could take around about five to 10 minutes to do so. If it looks like it's frozen, just make sure to leave it again. When I first run this, it did take a little while, but it's definitely worth running through. Now, once advanced system care is done, it's going to give you a summary of what your security situation is, your performance situation, and your stability situation. It's going to tell you how many items it can fix for you. And once you just go through there, what I recommend you do is hit the fix button. And once it's done with that, it's going to tell you that the fix is completed and it's going to give you an overall summary of everything that it's gone ahead and fixed for you. Once you're done inside of there, press the finish button. And then what I recommend you guys do is you run CCleaner and Advanced System Care around about once a month, whether you do it on the first or the last day of every month, just to make sure that your system is running to the best of its ability for the next month coming up and that you're not going to run into any issues. Another great tool inside of Advanced System Care, if we go to the speed up tab is the turbo boost button. So I feel this works very similarly to other game boosters like Razer Cortex or anything, but this is also included inside of the software and it's very, very, very useful. Now for you NVIDIA users, what we're going to be doing is right clicking on the desktop, going to NVIDIA control panel, going into adjust image settings with preview, using advanced 3D image settings by checking that middle button there and pressing the apply button. Then we're going to be going to manage 3D settings and what I want you guys to do is go ahead, pause the video, make sure that all of your settings are corresponding to mine. If the option isn't there for you, don't worry about it, but if it is, make sure it's set to my setting. Go ahead and just pause the video through here to make sure that your settings match. For OpenGL rendering GPU, it's more than likely going to say that your GPU is there, or you can just set it to auto select. And then once you guys are done copying those settings, press the apply button in the bottom right, and then you can exit out of NVIDIA control panel. Now, moving on from there, guys, there's only one more step to do. Go ahead, restart your PC, come back onto here. And what I want you guys to go ahead and do is open up Advanced System Care once more, go into the speed up utility found here, go into the turbo boost option and turn that on. 
It's going to tell you how many megabytes of RAM it's managed to release and how many services and apps have been able to be stopped. Minimize that. And then what we're going to be doing is going into the FPS pack provided. We're going to be booting the time resolution.exe. We're going to be running that as an administrator. And this basically means that Windows code can run as fast as it wishes to. Basically means that your game exe and Windows code can talk to each other and access your resources as fast as possible, which is very, very good for reducing frame latency, frame times and increasing FPS. So inside of here, once you're inside of the program, what we need to do is press the maximum button. And then you can just minimize that and leave it running in the tray below. Once you're done playing, hit default and exit. But for while we're playing, what we're going to be doing is run as admin, hit maximum and leave it in the minimize tray. Then what we can go ahead and do then is we can then boot into Rainbow Six Siege. And once you guys are in game, what we need to do is go to the settings tab once more, go into options, go into display and make sure that your resolution is set to whichever resolution you wish to play on. I'm going to be playing on 1920 by 1080. If you guys are still experiencing some minor FPS issues, make sure that you bump this down a little bit, depending on how high end or low end your system is. But for me, when you're running at 1920 by 1080 and also set your screen refresh rate to whichever is the highest possible. Make sure that aspect ratio is set to auto, VSync is turned off, widescreen letterbox can be turned on or off if you wish to do so, that's off for me, and set your FOV accordingly. Once you're done inside of there, hit the apply button. Yes, apply these changes. And once you're done with that, guys, you're ready to jump in game, go and experience your new and improved FPS. Make sure that you do post your results down in the comment section below and any feedback or questions you may have would be deeply, deeply appreciated. If you can also leave a like on this video, that'd be absolutely fantastic. And if you guys like this kind of content and you want to see this kind of content for other games, I've done plenty of games on my channel and other informative guide videos. Please do press that subscription button and also press the notification button to get notified whenever I do upload. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do recommend this video to any friends or any family or anyone else you meet in game who might be having any FPS issues or just want a nice increase depending on whether or not they're running on a low end, medium end or high end system. No matter what the budget, this will help absolutely everyone and give you the best competitive edge inside of Rainbow Six Siege. Thank you very much for watching guys. Enjoy the FPS. I've been Panjano and I'm out.